Hey everyone, Cambry here showing you how to use your camera to make good videos. So if you're new, go ahead and subscribe and also check out my private Facebook group linked below where I can better answer your filmmaking questions. And I'm excited to bring you this behind the scenes look into my latest short film, Bedtime, which is linked up here and also down in the description. So you can check that out before you see this. But in this behind the scenes video, I'm not gonna so much cover camera settings like I did in my last behind the scenes series for my short film, Coming Home. But I'm gonna more so be looking at things like script read-throughs and editing to see how we could better formulate the story as well as planning for different scenes and uh, filming some of those as well so you can just see my thought process on how I set things up and try to make everything flow together. But if you do have any questions as far as camera settings used, lighting setups or equipment used, then go ahead and post those comments in the description or in the comments section and I'll go ahead and answer those to the best of my memory. And with that, let's jump into some of the script editing. So to make things easier when we're shooting, we want to get the girls to where they can just know their lines like that instead of us having to work it out while we're doing that. So whenever we go in the car, I just start saying things to them so they get used to saying those answers back. So we'll try some right here. Hey, did, did you spill that? drank it? I thought you needed a straw. We're big girls. Oh, okay, big girl. Go to sleep. <laughs> girls, what are you still doing up so late? We want to see you. You want to see me? Well, go to sleep. <laughs> Alright, let's do one more, honey. You ready? Where did you get those? I'm for pillows. Seriously? Here, now you can have two. Good night. <laughs> So if that's the idea, just over and over again until they get it down and hopefully it'll work out. Should I cut back a little more? I want it to be more confrontational a little bit, like building, because I want it to be basically this part. I'm kind of accusing you of, hey, why didn't you do your job? And you're coming back like, I have a lot of stuff to do. Are you serious, babe? It's like nine o'clock. Why are you letting them stay up so late? Well, I'm not letting them stay up this late. So basically, I'm kind of making it seem, well, not necessarily that your job is easy, but that it should have been done, like what's the big deal? So then later on when it's hard for me, it's kind of like, oh, I understand now. Yeah, okay, so. So what was the original you said? That they haven't been going to bed uh, very easily lately. They refuse to go to sleep tonight till you kiss them goodnight. So we already said you got distracted, so we could play off that. So you got distracted, so like from doing, you were doing what? Like I had, since you were late, I had to like get bath, and clean, feed, brush teeth, and clean up, make dinner, all that stuff by myself. So we can just put all that into some. And then they want to snap, so brush the teeth again. <laughs> some response, like. But you know they go down easier for you. And since you were late, I had to cook dinner, do baths, put pajamas on, brush teeth, and I'm still doing the dishes. Not that you're irritated already when you came down, but when you came down after having to do all that, then I'm saying like, why isn't that done? Then that irritates you. So it's, you kind of like, well, you want to leave that line there, they go down easier for you? Yeah, I mean, because. So something like, hey, they do they go down easier for you, but since you were late, so you kind of point, Put that on me uh -huh. since you were late you know i had to do everything you just said like all that and you need to throw something in there like and i still haven't finished yet because obviously you're sitting there yeah doing dishes so then we can work out the wording of that but then basically you know i come back to that point like oh so so i'm like you need me to show you how it's done yeah as i'm getting up and walking off so you just need me to show you how it's done Oh, come on. Just don't take no for an answer. Mm, okay. And you can just be kind of like, roll your eyes or be somewhat annoyed, like, okay. Yeah. And then I head upstairs. That's where you say, good luck. Almost, I don't know if that would be a sarcastic tone, but like, almost like you know, it's probably not going to be as easy as I'm making it out to be. So then I go upstairs. Oh, and we talked about, since we're not using the clock, Stopwatch. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, some help putting that in where I start a stopwatch. Yeah, so you, I know, know, it's you know it's it's probably going to take a while. So, how about I get up and say, show you how it's done. You're like, sure. And you 
say good luck and like kind of turn and pull up your phone and start a stopwatch. Good luck. I don't need it. That can be a basis for how much time has passed throughout the rest of the story. So we finished going through all the scenes here for the script, put in a lot of write-ins, changes to dialogue, how we're going to work different scenes out and all that. So putting all this in the computer now, making everything look good without all the scribbling on it. And then after that, I'm going to start working on uh, figuring out when we're going to film what so I can put together a schedule because we're going to start shooting in just a couple days. And this part's pretty boring for me. so put on a movie to keep me entertained while I'm typing. So we'll see you at the next part. Just got this in the mail, getting ready for the video. You can come over here now. My main LED I use can't be powered anymore by the wall because the cord broke. And I can't find a replacement anywhere because it's an old model. But it runs on batteries. Got some new batteries and a battery charger as well here. The only way I had to charge the batteries that came with it was through plugging them into the light and plugging the light in the wall. So now, batteries, battery charger. Now we can go light it. So we went through, rewrote the script. Now I'm just going through and marking off the different sections that can all be filmed together easily and uh, pretty much going from there to see what days. Looks like we can realistically do this in about four days of shooting just because they're a little kid so you can't push them too far because they'll just quit. And we're almost done, honey. And then, yeah, I'll, so I'm gonna shoot for two days and then over the weekend get all the little extra shots like pulling cups out of cabinets and looking around for bunnies and toys and that type of thing. And then do the last couple scenes and should be good, which we rented some gear that's gonna be coming, some lenses. I'm working with prime lenses this time instead of my zoom, just to see if that changes quality as far as sharpness and that type of thing, so. And a lower aperture, so. Once that gets here, we'll start unboxing. So, it's a little messy because I'm getting everything ready for the shoot. We're starting tomorrow, but the main camera I'm using for this is the Sony a7 III. I'm not gonna be using this lens. I'm waiting for some lenses to come that we ordered. But for the other shots where we have two cameras involved for conversations, that type of thing, have the Sony a7S Mark II that I'll be using for that as well. I will be using this 55 1.8. I may end up using this one depending on the shots. We'll see, but I plan on using mostly the primes. Got lots of batteries here that we talked about the other day that came. Got this small LED that I'll be using a lot because it's easy to hide. Have multiple, uh, this H1 recorders with some lapel mics. I'm gonna kind of rig those up to the beds that we're gonna be using. So you can hear that. Uh, monitor, used for some of the shots. Microphone for overhead, boom mic here. We have, I don't know if I'll use that at all. But down here, You've got more of those microphones we were just talking about. If you don't have something charging, then you're probably wrong because there's tons of batteries for everything. Some gaff tape for rigging stuff. Slate there. I'm going to be using this possibly outside of a window to make some moonlight or street light coming through. We're going to test that out later. Bring you along on that. Got a C-stand that we're going to have for that as well as miking and other stuff. One of the tripods that can get down really low for being at the kids' height at their rooms. This is the other one that I'll be using that for as well. I've got a slider here on top of this old tripod. I never use this anymore except it's heavier, so it's good for putting a slider on because it's more stable once you get out far away like this. This one tends to kind of tip over on the ball there. I've got this. We'll have a few shots possibly with my uh, Ronin with the gimbal there. 
but that's the main equipment. There's some stuff I'm sure I'm missing as well, but we'll go over stuff as we're starting scenes. But then coming down here, this is the room we're filming in tonight. And this is the normal setup of their beds, but it's not really that good for how I plan on filming because a lot of it's going to be from the door here looking in. I want my bunny. Me too, I want my bun bun. And then trying to get angles when these are at the wall just won't work, won't work well. So what I'm going to be doing, this is all going to be shot at night. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to bring these beds next to each other here with a little lamp table and a lamp on top of it to light them there and possibly some light coming through the window. Hold on, bud. And we'll get a time lapse of that now in just a minute, rearranging all this and seeing how we work that and set up the scene. And actually, I think those other lenses might be here. Looks like it's here. Hey, you doing fine, how are you? I'm good. I need to get you a cigar. What is it? It's a box inside of a box. It's heavy, hold on. Boom. So let's see what it is. Lens rentals. I rented some lenses for the video one There we go. You can come in closer. So we have the Sony 24 millimeter G Master lens. Smaller than I thought it'd be. Careful. The massive Sigma Sony mount 35 millimeter 1.2. That'll be one of the main ones I'm going to be using. Careful. And this is the Sigma 50 millimeter 1.4. So we've been using the uh, most of the time I'm always using my. A zoom lens 24 to 70 because it's just easy but I want to try out some primes this time since it's all going to be done at home we have it all planned out it's easy to plan the shots so we can do that and also I'm going to be making some videos as well on here shortly on the difference between these uh, mechanical focus zooms and the mirrorless cameras that don't have that and why that's another reason Wait, I want to use these. They're in the wrong ones. It's okay we'll get them back. Big thing was I wanted to kind of clean up the area, obviously, so it looks nice. And something to remember when you're up against a wall is the easiest way to add depth is to just work at angles. And you'll see that in a minute. But here I rigged up some sound along their beds and just was able to use the pillows to hide those mics. And then I didn't get it in here, but later we put some pictures up. Worked on some lights to get it looking nice. And this is how some of those shots at those angles ended up looking. I need a shot. Honey, just drink it. No, I need this job. Fine, here, hold this, sweetie. So we just finished first night of recording. It was a little rough at first, little kids, but uh, come look at here. The first thing I do whenever I get done with day of shooting is back everything up so I've got all the footage going into Final Cut Pro and it saves it there. And I also have an external here that I'm saving all the files to, so I've got two separate places. Then I'll wipe all the cards so that I don't start getting footage mixed up with what I've done already or not. So I can just unload everything every time. And uh, it's gonna take a while because we're shooting for about almost two hours tonight. So I have audio from five different sources and then one camera used. So after the, the ah, I can't talk. So after this gets done, I'm gonna just go over the footage, see how things looked and see how it's gonna be able to work together with tomorrow's shoot.
for one, I mean, I don't want to mess up my camera, but this expensive lens I rented. But I got this. I don't have, I don't know what people normally use on these sandbags, but I just got some dumbbells for now. It's a six pound counter right there, at least to hold this. And it's pretty sturdy, but just freaks me out. We haven't been able to get much behind the scenes of filming with the girls, the little girls in the room we did the last couple days because there's no telling what they're gonna do from minute to minute. We just have to stay on top of it, but we're almost done with all the filming with them. So I'm gonna get into more of what we're doing here. This is just a transition going up and down the stairs and what we're gonna do in this initial times of coming up and down is just being more, I guess, I just gotta go do something, no big deal, but then each time after that that I have to go get another thing, it's just kind of more annoyed looking while walking and trying to use some body language. If you can even tell that from an overhead view, we'll find out, but it's just an easy transition as well from upstairs to downstairs and a different view from what normal people, not normal people, but people normally see. So that uh, just adds something interesting to the video. So we're setting that up here, it should be pretty easy. We're gonna walk up and down a bunch and then see how it looks in the video and if it's even useful but I'm gonna get something to put over these legs as well just to hold this thing in place but one thing to keep in mind with this type of thing is make sure you position it so the heavy parts are over this because if you do it the opposite way then this thing would just tip right over so we'll see how it looks So we're able to work stuff out a little bit better using this slate here to make it easier for distinguishing between takes. One of the big things is to have it up and focused. Before you hit records, when you go through your clips, you can actually see in the thumbnail for that clip what it is. But uh, we already did all the takes from this side, looking over my shoulder at her talking. So now we're getting the opposite angle. We're on the fourth take of this, should be the last one. We're gonna set up one more over here in the middle for a 50-50 shot of both of us. But just a little action to see how we're working this. All right, kitchen fight scene, camera two, take four. Action. Right, I guess I should get my stuff set before we start, right? That would be helpful. Hey babe, did you get my message earlier? Uh, yeah, I did, but I got sidetracked. It's the big kid. Well, you want some of this? Uh, hours ago. Yeah, I'm sorry I'm so late. It's just, everyone's going way slower today. I'm so proud of that show. Ever. You still want to watch something? Mm -hmm. I do, but um, the girls want to see it first. They're still awake? Mm -hmm. Are you serious, babe? It's like almost 9 o'clock. Oh, you know they go to bed easier for you, and since you were late, I had to do the baths and stories and pajamas and brush teeth and clean up and I'm still not even done. Uh, the older two go to sleep? Oh, yeah, they're easy. So you just need to show you how it's done. Come on, man. I'll take no for an answer. Okay. Good luck. I don't need it. I do want more because I did something that I didn't like in that. What did you do? I don't know, but I just know I didn't like it. Huh? I just know I didn't like it. So for the first take, we had the camera over my shoulder here so it was easy to set up the shot. But on this one, I had a 50 millimeter on the other side. I'm using a 35 on this side because it's so close to her. And I couldn't see the screen, so I set up a monitor so that we could you know, frame it up, make sure everything was looking right. And those can be quite useful when your camera doesn't have a flip out screen. Since Sony will not update their alpha cameras to make them more vlogger friendly. But we're gonna keep, 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 we're gonna keep going with this. So a little trick I learned and like to use when I'm not using a gimbal, but I still wanna have a steadier shot. 
Just take a monopod, works for the tripod too. Turn the head 90 degrees or as far as it can go. You can put this down for something to hold. You can put another one on the other side, hold it like that. I like to just hold it like this most of the time. You can move around and as long as you walk smooth, it'll give you a pretty good picture. So I'll give you a little example here. So here we decided to add a part where I'm looking for their bunnies and we want to get a view from the toilet, but obviously don't want to put a camera in there or risk it falling. So this was the next best thing we got here. A little bit of light for my face since the ceiling is so bright in the picture. Once you get up in there, you can see it kind of works pretty well. And we'll see how this turns out. Hopefully it'll be funny. What's so hard about flushing? About to poop in the toilet and oh come on. Oh, what is so hard about flushing? Alright, rolling. Alright, so we're on our last night of filming. Just getting a few odds and ends that we need to get right now. We're getting a lot of scenes from me searching for their toys and so it's kind of hard to set focus on yourself from an oven when you can't find the viewfinder since once again sony give us one that flips out please but got this monitor hooked up so i can get the focus set before we take the shot and hopefully this should work out pretty well come over here hopefully this should work out pretty well Exposure should be okay. So I'm gonna be have my head about here. So this thing has focus peaking. There we go. Let's get to where my eyes are red. There we go. Right there. Come on, there we go. I should do it. Take this out so there's no reflections. On the glass. It's not always fun setting all these different things up, but it's what we do. So this is what we started with, lights in the bathroom, and it's just very flat, especially when we come out here from where we're getting the shot. It's just nothing special. Everything's lit evenly, so we're going to try to set up a few lights here I brought in and see if we can make our own light shape a little better and make this scene look better. So this is what we came up with afterwards. Just got this light bouncing off the ceiling to get some light on our face or in that area. That went to light up our face a little bit and gives a contrast with this being outside here, framing her within a frame. Looks a lot better than what we started with. It's not great. I don't have a whole lot of time to do this though. so. We made it work for what we're doing. So it's 11.35 the night before I have to return the equipment. And we just finished recording or filming or whatever you want to call it for this video. And one thing is that I learned is really good is tape a, a lab mic into your clothes. That's part of how we chose the clothes we're wearing today. I had this so I could get it up in here or a collar shirt or something like that. And it's pretty thick, so you don't see the wire, but this has saved me already a few times when I found out my, uh, wherever it is, our other microphone, the cord wasn't all the way in or got knocked out halfway through. So it didn't record sound for half the day. So lots of sound, uh, what's the word? Inputs? <laughs> Clips, Help me clips. out here. Yeah, I guess lots of sound uh, clips. <laughs> uh, sound clips. I don't know the word. I'm going blank. It's so late now. But you know, basically, we have lots of sources. There we go of sound, so that you can have yourself backed up. And now there's equipment everywhere. 
and I'm not going to do anything because I'm going to bed. We'll clean it tomorrow, but we get everything uploaded, everything backed up, and then we'll get into editing. Back up your stuff, one of the most important things, because after all the hours we put in, what, probably, I don't know, at least two a day, probably close to 20 hours on this video, so I don't want to lose any of that because it's been a lot of work, so keep your stuff safe, back it up, lots of places. So here's the not so fun part. I'm going to be going through the whole thing here and then listening to what parts I need to dub back over. There's a lot of stuff with the girls. We didn't have the girls say like right here. We had Jill say it just so I could react to I want my bun bun. Why don't you have them? So we got to go back through and actually record the girls saying those things so that I can take Jill's voice out put theirs in to make everything work. So have some stuff for us I need to over dub over and then a lot for the girls. So I'm gonna go through, watch the whole thing, write down uh, what we need to do and then we'll be recording that stuff tomorrow. Then put all that in and then I get to come back and do it with everything else, listening to where should there be footprints, where should there be noises from things moving around, from beds, objects, whatever. So it's not the most fun part, but it adds a huge, uh, production value and makes your stuff way better when you have all the audio and extra sound effects so gonna get to it now all right so just got done with that part i really don't have too much broke it down with each person just a few words lines for each of them so it's not too bad because we took the time thankfully to have a bunch of mics we had a boom mic on most of the scenes with the girls i had a um a lab mic taped to my shirt and so did Jill underneath and then also had a couple extra ones taped to the girls beds but with all the movement they did it kind of was pointless because the audio wasn't very good but the thing to take away from that is that have as many audio sources as you can and try to get them as close to your people as you can because my last video I had to dub over everything and it was a pain and this there's hardly anything almost all the dialogue and all the scenes is good so I just have to tweak the audio for all those and then add in these few extra things we worked on here. Recording sound with the kids. Say, I want you to read Peppa Pig. I want you to read Peppa Pig. Here, don't move forward. You're getting too close. Scoot back just a little bit. I want you to read Peppa Pig. I want you to read Peppa Pig. Say, I want you to read a story. I want you to read a story. Where did you get those? I left my pillows. Well, here, just look at me. Look at me. Ready? Out of our pillows. Out Honey, that, that makes noise. Here, look at look at me. Okay, stop moving stuff. Out of our pillows. Out of our pillows. Where did you get those? Out of our pillows. Out of our pillows. Seriously? Oh, I'm in China right now, and I've been working for the past couple days on sound effects for this thing. See, all this red here is all added sound effects. So, so if we take a look at this, I'm going to turn all this red off. Like here, this is what this scene sounded like. There's nothing wrong with it, natural sounds. But, turn all this back on. Now we have ambient sounds. Garage door opening. Sound of the car driving. This sounds a lot better. We have footsteps. I have different types of footsteps for different parts, like footsteps for wearing shoes, walking on wood, barefoot on the wood, walking on the carpet, and all that. Refrigerator door opening, sound of drinks moving. So there's a lot of stuff there, and it all adds to it, like here, the drawer opening. And it's those little details that really make it better. There's a lot of that going through here. And if I back out, you can see all the red in this thing. It can be very painful. But once it's done, it ends up sounding a lot better. And you don't have dead space. And everything just makes a lot more sense. So finish that. Now I'm going to get on to color grading the whole thing. And be close to finishing this out. So getting excited. Almost there. Do it finally. And that is exported the final video. 
after all the sound effects, color grading, all that stuff's done. It's always the hardest part for me to get to this point, would you say? Probably because I always want to change something after I'm done. Because you're a perfectionist. Well, I'll say that. <laughs> if my stuff doesn't look perfect, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I got to get this uploaded now and also upload my bloopers reel and then finish up this behind the scenes so I can have all this up on the two channels to release three days from now, or really, I guess like two and a half days from now. So that's it. If you do have any questions, uh, just go ahead and post them down below. I hope this was helpful for you and uh, all that YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, comment. I'll see you soon.